Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm drawing things I don't usually want to draw because I stink at drawing them. Long time no see! I am back from my break and feeling ready to jump back into making videos. Since I am feeling well rested, I thought I would try pushing myself to draw things I know I struggle with. It's easy for me to practice things that I find fun drawing, but when it comes to things I don't find as fun, I can tend to avoid them, like backgrounds. <laughs> So I'm going to try to stop avoiding them and tackle them straight on. So the first thing I wanted to try improving at drawing are roses. I really like to draw flowers, however I always avoid roses because I can never really understand them and their form. Even when I look at reference pictures I have a hard time drawing them. Their petals are just so complicated. First I am attempting to draw a rose from memory, this way we have something to compare my improvement to. Also I want to mention that something I did slot time for when creating this video is watching or reading tutorials. In more recent years I don't really watch tutorials, I'll try to break things down on my own or do my own studies. However, like I mentioned with roses, I still struggle with them even with reference pictures, so I thought it'd be good to watch some tutorials to see how other people break down and draw roses. Sometimes to learn how to draw something, you need to see other artists draw it. The video I watched was How to Draw a Rose by Mark Crilly here on YouTube. I felt super nostalgic watching this video since I used to watch Mark's tutorials all the time as a young artist, and this video on drawing roses was super helpful. For this first attempt, I'm drawing from a reference, and eventually I'll try to draw a rose without one. I'm starting by drawing the general outline for the rose. For the center of the rose, Mark described it as a traffic cone shape, and this little tip helped me so much when it came to understanding the middle of the rose. Another thing I learned is that the petals kind of keep crisscrossing or overlapping. They also start to fold over themselves more and more the further away they are from the center. The center petals kind of go more up and don't fold, but as we move away they start to fold over more. Also, I would often think of the petals as coming from the center of the flower. And they do, but they also kind of wrap around the center of the flower, so I try to keep the curves of the middle bulb shape in mind. Also, in my original sketch I made the center very small, and after watching Mark's video I learned that the center batch of petals takes up a good portion of the rose. So I drew it much bigger this time. Also, the petals can be very pointy in shape when they fold in on themselves. I often want to make them super rounded, but the pointy shapes really help give the feeling of it being a rose. I feel like my original sketch looked more like a tropical flower instead of a rose. I did do a second study and will kind of be speeding through this one, but I did find that with the second one I was wanting to veer away from the reference picture. With the first study I felt like the reference was really holding my hand so to speak, but with the second one I started to feel more confident and wanted to try doing things my own way. And I always see this as a good sign because it means I'm starting to understand things a bit more because I'm able to break away from the reference a bit. So now that I was feeling a bit more confident I decided to try drawing a rose from imagination and applying what I had learned. I started with a very loose shape and drew a cone like shape to help me get an idea of where I want the center to be. I do have to say, I do feel like I've made good progress with drawing roses, but I do feel like I could add more petals. I feel like I'm kind of oversimplifying the rose a bit, which isn't a bad thing, I guess it's just kind of my own way of drawing roses. But looking back at this drawing footage, I feel like I could have added some more petals to the center area, uh, because there are a lot of petals in that area. One part that was kind of fun was adding the hatching to add some depth to the rose. I kind of just let my instincts take over for this part and almost treated the petals like clothing folds if that makes sense. I quite enjoyed this part. So here are all my rose studies and practices. I was slightly dreading drawing the roses, but once I got going it was actually pretty fun. Like I said, I like drawing flowers, so it's nice to have another option to choose from. When it comes to drawing characters, there are many things I've practiced over the years. But one thing I've never practiced a ton is drawing characters kissing. I was thinking about my webcomic and I'm not guaranteeing there will be a kiss or anything. But if there will be, I won't know how to draw it when the time comes. So I figured it's something I should practice. Also the characters I'm subjecting this practice to are my OCs Clarence and Esther because they're married. <laughs> Once again I'm doing a kind of first attempt to gauge where my current level is at and we have something to compare it to. And yeah, I didn't try super hard for this first attempt mostly because I was feeling very confused and I didn't know exactly how to convey what I was trying to convey. This first attempt just looks very awkward and I think this is why I often avoid practicing drawing this kind of pose. The awkwardness makes me feel awkward. <laughs> 
Once again, to help me out, I found some tutorials. I watched a few different ones, but I found the one that helped me the most was Draw This Not That, How to Draw a Kiss Scene That Isn't Gross by Lavender Town. In the video, she gives a lot of really helpful tips. One that helped me a ton is that for the character that is tilting their head towards us, we will see more of their eyelashes. I wasn't sure how to convey this form of head tilt in my first attempt, so learning this helped a ton. I knew the characters needed to turn their heads so that they don't bonk noses. Uh, so for one character, we'll see more of the underjaw area, but I didn't know what to draw more of on the other character. And the answer is we can see the other eye more. Of course, the most tricky part is the lip area. I decided to draw Clarence's head separate to help me get the proportions normal. And then I moved it closer to Esther. It took a lot of small adjustments to get the look I wanted. I kind of tried to fit the mouths together in a way that didn't look too odd. And I'll refine the shape more with my second sketch. I have written and illustrated other stories in the past, like I Want to Be a Magical Girl, White Day, and the Autumn Festival, but all of them never really required me to draw a kiss. I do remember trying to draw a kiss when I was like 15 or so. My mom and I were watching a movie, I think it was Letters to Juliet, but I don't totally remember. At the beginning of the movie, it was showing different kisses and one of them had anime characters. So little 15 year old me paused the movie at that point and I tried to copy it. I tried a handful of times, but I was not happy with all attempts and was kind of frustrated. So I didn't try to draw a kiss again until now. <laughs> Maybe I found that experience kind of scarring. I do feel like this drawing turned out okay. It ended up better than I was expecting, but I know it's not perfect and I will need to practice this more. The kiss itself feels very light, like a little peck, and this is okay, but I also feel like Clarence's and Esther's faces look a bit off with the way they intertwine, is that the word I'm looking for? Uh, but I did still learn a lot from this, so that's good. I don't expect myself to make something perfect or that I'm super duper happy with on the first try, but there is improvement and that's what matters. I did decide to add a bit of coloring just to help things feel a bit more finished, Plus it helps me better see the picture and its shapes when I add the colors to define each section. It was fun drawing Esther and Clarence again. I haven't drawn Esther since I made my visual novel game last year. And I haven't drawn Clarence since I initially designed him. He didn't get to appear in the game and I was a bit sad about that. I wanted to try to fit him in but I ran out of time. Also, I know I said I was going to try to make a visual novel game again this year, but I don't know if I'll have time for it. My sister Reagan is getting a surgery done, and she helps me out a lot when it comes to watching our youngest brother Jack, so I won't have as much help. Plus, my boyfriend and some of my family will be coming up to visit in February, uh, so I'll be busy with that as well, uh, but we will see what I can do. <laughs> Anyways, here's my progress for drawing characters kissing. Lavender Town's video was super helpful, so if you're trying to draw characters kissing, uh, check out her tutorial. I know the whole point of this video is to draw things I don't like drawing, but the next thing took so much motivation for me to actually practice. But before we jump into that, I want to thank Tokyo Treat and Zakuriko for sponsoring this video. Their goal is to share Japanese culture and invite everyone to experience Japan from the comfort of their own homes through their snack boxes. Tokyo Treat and Sakurako are both monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes, but they both have their own characteristics. First we have Tokyo Treat. You'll get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. This box is celebrating the new year with the theme of Snack in New Year. Rain in the new year with unique snacks like the Kit Kat Strawberry Chocolate Cake, Teori on Somen Noodles, and Spy Family Anya Candy. These are super yummy. You can learn more about all the snacks you receive as well as allergen information in this super handy booklet. The booklet also contains a wealth of information about Japanese culture. Two of my personal favorite snacks from this box are the Koi Kea Nori Salt Chips and Fanta Premier Pear Soda. These luxury thick cut potato chips are covered with savory nori seaweed and lightly seasoned with salt. They are so yummy, they're super delicious. This Fanta Premier Pear is made from the puree of high quality European pears. It smells and tastes just like pears and it's so good. Next, let's take a look at Sakuriko. If you're looking for an authentic Japanese snack subscription box, this one is for you. Each box comes with 20 traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and one special Japanese tableware. Sakuriko is partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. 
This time Sakura Co is partnering with Niigata, the heart of Japanese cuisine. Niigata endures some of the heaviest snowfall in all of Japan. The snow contributes to their livelihood, creating fertile land and clear water ready for rice cultivation in the spring. This box invites you to try Niigata's local delicacies like a Chigo Hime strawberry crepe, Hatsune Okaki crackers, and Nagi Miso Senbai. All snacks pair well with the unique Genmai Black Bean Haujicha Tea. This month's kitchenware is a Sakura Ko Sake Cup. I don't drink, but it's still a very cute cup. Two of my personal favorite snacks from this box are the Rabbit Hozui and Fortune Cookie. These Japanese styled marshmallows are super adorable. The bunny is seen as the luckiest sign in the lunar calendar. This delicate treat is filled with a creamy white bean paste and they are so cute. The fortune cookie was super crisp and yummy, but also really fun because you get a fortune inside. You can see translations of all the fortunes on the Sakura Co. website. I got slightly good fortune. These January boxes are no longer available for purchase, however you can make sure you don't miss out on any exclusive snacks by signing up for next month's theme. It looks super neat. Make sure to check out the links in the description and pinned comment. Thank you so much again to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to drawing. I often avoid drawing industrial backgrounds. I don't mind drawing natural backgrounds with trees and stuff, but once you get buildings involved, you have to think about perspective a ton. The tutorial I watched to help me out this time was one by Ethan Becker. His educational videos are super helpful and he had a really good trick of using Google Earth. And then you take a picture and try to break down the perspective grid. I was going to try doing this, but my simple little mind was feeling way too overwhelmed by these complicated settings. So instead I went to Google, found a more simple picture, and tried breaking that down instead. So first I need to find the horizon line. This is where the eye level of the camera is, and our lines will go to it. I can find it by making two lines and drawing a horizontal line where the lines meet. In this case I'm using a perspective ruler in Clip Studio Paint because I like how it extends outside the canvas and I can see the horizon line for longer. So as you can see, all the lines head back to this point, except for the horizontal ones, since this is one point perspective, they do not. Using the picture as my reference, I started sketching and trying to recreate it in a way. I do have the perspective ruler displayed, but I'm not snapping my brush strokes to it, so I'm doing this all freehand. I wanted to do the study without the help of perspective rulers, just to make sure I do have a good understanding and that the program isn't helping me at all. As I was doing this, it was going a lot smoother than I expected. I don't know, I was expecting to struggle a lot more than I was. I was trying to justify the easiness of it by saying, well, it's just one point perspective and maybe I should try something a bit more complicated. I did try to draw in a box that is turned. Because it's turned, the lines won't go to the vanishing point like the rest of the lines. Instead, we make new points on the horizon lines for the lines going towards those. This was a very helpful tip from Ethan's video. Even if something is turned in a different way, the lines will still meet at the horizon line. Since the one point perspective went smoothly, I decided to try one with two point perspective and see if that felt difficult or challenging. And this is where I learned something kind of big, but we'll talk about that in a minute. If you don't know, two point perspective has two points on the horizon line that the lines go to. I placed mine pretty far out because if you place the points close together, you get a kind of fishbowl effect and this can look really odd. Uh, so it can help to place your points uh, further apart outside your canvas or outside your drawing area. They're still on my canvas. I was just drawing in a smaller area. <laughs> so what I learned while doing this is that it's not my understanding of perspective that's the difficult part for drawing industrial backgrounds because I do have a basic understanding of perspective and I can execute it. The actual reason I struggle with industrial backgrounds is because my visual memory library for buildings and building details is very low. For example, when I picture a window in my head, it's very basic and I can't come up with extra details. And the same thing goes for doors, roads, sidewalks. I see all these things every day, but I don't take any mental notes for them. However, for this drawing, I had just been looking at some buildings and I was also looking at different references. And so it was slightly easier for me to come up with the details. This whole time I thought my problem with the backgrounds was my understanding of perspective when really it's my lack of understanding buildings and their details. And also I'm not trying to say I'm like a master of perspective, I'm not. I still have a lot I could work on and improve on. Uh, but when it comes to drawing these backgrounds, 
I just don't know what details to add to the buildings. So to help with this, I made a document that has a bunch of different reference pictures for different window styles, door styles, building styles, and other elements to help me build my visual library. Now that I've practiced drawing a few different things, I want to try to combine them all, not only to practice them more, but also to put what I've learned to use. So I'll need the illustration to include roses, a man-made background, and a couple kissing. I'm starting by making some thumbnail sketches to try out different compositions. I decided to go with my first one since it's the one I felt like I could best picture in my head. I am making progress in this video, but I still didn't want to push myself too hard since I am drawing things outside my comfort zone. For this, I'm allowing myself to use the perspective rulers just to make things less time consuming. Plus, I was starting to run a bit short on time and the perspective rulers help that go faster by snapping my lines I draw to the perspective. But you do have to be careful. Sometimes you end up drawing lines the wrong way, especially with two-point perspective. Like you'll think you're drawing a line going one way when actually it's going towards the other vanishing point, so you have to be careful. <laughs> I'm going to be drawing Esther and Clarence outside of a townhome kind of building. And in the foreground, there will be roses. Also, my least favorite part for this was the stairs and railing. For whatever reason, I was struggling with those and making them work. They almost made me throw in the towel. That's the thing about tackling drawing subjects you don't like as much. It's much easier to lose motivation and just scrap things. And honestly, I probably would have if this wasn't for a video. <laughs> Making stuff for videos helps keep me more motivated and push through, but I did almost call it quits when I was struggling with the stairs. Also, I just noticed I didn't really talk about my break at all, uh, so update. It was a nice break. I spent time with my family, played Pokemon, went shopping with my mom. I did do a little bit of work. I did some prep work for YouTube shorts because I do like posting shorts. It's just when working on normal stuff, I don't have much time to make them. So I worked a bit on them while on break. I also went to see my boyfriend again. The last time I saw him, I only got to visit for like a day. So it was pretty short. This time I got to visit for a few days and it was very nice. I got to see more of where he lives and try different foods and places that he likes to go to. And we went to a plane museum and I saw a bunch of planes and they were so cool. I had never been that close to planes before. My boyfriend knew a whole bunch about them so he was my tour guide. <laughs> So yeah, that was most of my break. I was hoping to get a bit more done, like I wanted to reorganize my room and different things, but I was trying to let my break be an actual break. I can be a bit of a busybody and I like to stay busy and can have a hard time sitting still. But overall, it was a good break and I feel ready to jump back into making videos and working on my webcomic. Once again, thank you for your patience when it comes to the next chapter of my webcomic. I'm getting really close to being able to post it, hopefully. Thank you for your patience. I did kind of color the picture. I added a bunch of different tones in grayscale, and then I will use a gradient map to add color. I decided to keep the rendering pretty simple for this. I mostly added it just to help things feel a bit more final and help me tell the different forms apart. I render pictures all the time, so it didn't really feel like something I needed to practice for this. Plus, like I said, I was running short on time. I kind of decided to do this final picture last minute. Uh, but I do feel like it was good to put things I learned to practice and have them all be together in one picture. Since the characters are so tiny, I didn't really get to practice drawing the kiss, but I did practice the pose, so that's good. But yeah, I'm not super happy with the render but it's okay. I wasn't trying to put my work and effort into that. <laughs> so yeah, here are all the different things I practiced. This video did take some motivation and did challenge me, but I also learned a lot and I felt like it was a good use of time. Maybe I'll try to make this another series and do this again sometime because taking initiative to step outside your comfort zone and draw things you find difficult can be a great way to learn and broaden your drawing abilities. I hope me learning was also helpful to you and that you learned something alongside me. Before we end, I want to say a huge thank you to my super duper wonderful YouTube members and Patreon patrons. Your support means so much to me. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!